Hello everyone, my name is Lorthorn, and welcome to Minecraft Dragons and Dungeons. Yes, this is a mod pack set up by me. It is a fantasy adventure pack with a Dungeons and Dragons theme built into it. Currently here in the living room where we have our campaign set up and we're ready to go. So, let's jump into an adventure and see where that leads us. Our story starts in a tavern, like most adventures do. And on the wall, we have all the different achievements and goals set out for us ahead of time for every single class that there exists in the game. There is a mod or two for every single class, and we must sort of complete each of one said mod for that class to be completed. It does not have to be in order, but starting in the order as written, we have the cleric, which requires us to make the Cross of Mercy. For a ranger, we need to get a pet elephant, five pocket pets, and a pet tiger. For the druid, we have to beat the Batania Guardian Gaia, Guardian of Gaia, Guardian of Gaia. For a wizard, we have to get max level in mana and artifacts. For the bard, we have to play a song using either note blocks or the musical instrument mod I have installed. For the fighter, we have to get dragon steel gear. For the barbarian, we have to achieve a Fusro Da. For sorcerer, we have to get max level in astral sorcery. For the artificer, we have to make a dredge. For the rogue, we need to make the cloak of visibility or find it. For a warlock, we need max level of bloodstone. For a monk, we need to complete some sort of Jojo. And we have to go dungeoneering and clear at least five dungeons for the Dungeon Master portion of said Dungeons and Dragons. We have levels and skills we can make stronger and increase our hit points and all that stuff through a leveling RPG mod. We've got a wonderful tavern as the not home base, but as the achievement locker. We have a bed to start off where we're going to start off. And we have a journey to set out on. And as it is now a bright new dawn. We can set our game mode, and hopefully the mod pack doesn't kill itself before I complete it. And, well, it might need modifying to begin with. But now, our adventure begins. Our journey starts in Minecraft Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, first thing I noticed is this generated thing from graveyards with a wither skull and those can be useful so I'm going to collect that but I don't actually think there is anything underneath these unlike most other graveyard blocks because usually there's like a crypt of some sort hiding underneath where you can get treasure but I'm pretty certain the tree the memorial tree is an empty one which is a bit of a shame. But what isn't a shame is we have a nice astral sorcery to start with here, so we just need to achieve the gear to mine into it. And three blocks of wood with stone exposed nearby will get us that. And we've gotten our first spell from the Skyrim mod, which I have very little experience with, which apparently we know how to conjure swords somehow. Um, Craft or right click for consume the map potion. Huh. Ah! Interesting. Well, that's a very powerful sword. Right here. So, three stone will get us to stage two of having stone tools, not grave root tools. That's not a thing. And this will immediately last mine into the astral sorcery corners. And if we're lucky, we'll get at least one chest. But it looks like this might be it. Ah, okay, we got gold, ender pearl, and constellation paper. Ender pearl is the most prized possession I think that I got out of that old mix. Right then. Now, any obvious iron on the surface, because we do need to get a good start going. There's some obvious coal on the surface, so we can take the obvious coal to begin with. 
There's nothing else apparently valuable, but coal is always a good thing to get started with. So we will mine ourselves up some of this coal. And we got some Vintium, which might require iron to mine, so we'll do a brief check. And yes, Vintium requires iron, so we'll just continue mining the coal and whatever this abominable block is, because we got far, far too many mods. Decorative stone. Yeah, that's fine. Nothing wrong with a little bit of decorative stone. If I know anything about decorations and stone, nothing wrong with that. And it's an interesting little RPG different thing to the Minecraft Hearts. I'm not exactly certain what's activating that, so people will have to let me know within the comments of what is the cause of said thing, and then I'll get around to fixing it. Oh, a cave entrance. Excellent. Might be iron in here, or whatever you are, copper. I'm playing 1.16.5. I don't know if... does 1.16 already have copper in it? I think not. Or it might. I can't remember. Um, it's all, all a blur to me. What's being added in one edition and what's where and when's what. But we might as well get the conjured sword ready and some torches at the ready and we can proceed into this brief interlude of darkness to see if we can find a quick snatch or smidgen of any sort of iron ore. There is more coal in here. I might just have to grab that coal and move on. Also, my brother would be a gas that I'm still using the one pickaxe, so we'll just throw that away. And this is copper. Oh dear, we appear to have, oh no. A lot of copper available to us in various different forms. Well, that is slightly concerning. Hopefully they all communicate with each other. Or if not, I will need to fix that. Right then. Three torches left. No iron in sight. A little worrying. Certainly find some somewhere if it hasn't been all superseded by other ores. There we go. And we'll have enough to complete an iron pickaxe. And with iron pickaxe in our belt, or two. Oh my. We should be able to head out to find a good place to set up a house. Now there's a few dangerous mobs and mods installed, as well as a lot of dungeons. So we'll have to be on the lookout for those. However, I've already disabled griefing from said creatures, so our game won't be completely ruined. Although, I think dragons might ignore the no griefing even if you turn it off, which is a little scary. And the config to access the dragons is harder to get in 1.16 than in earlier iterations. But I shall proceed with gathering a small amount more coal and a few more stone blocks. Yeah, now I regret throwing away that wooden pickaxe. Alas, brother, I must use it again. To get, I'd say, nine, although I really only need eight. But getting out round it at nine is more, I don't know, satisfying to me. Okay. What remains of my crafting table is here. So we'll make a furnace. And I shall pick this up with my bare fist. And let us give the tavern a furnace to work with, as they don't have any way of cooking food in the tavern. So I'll put that behind the counter. Or a nice warm stove over here to heat people's bones up in the cold evenings to come. Wow, that was loud. I don't suppose I can eat any of these, can I? Appears not, they're all decorative. Well, it's probably better that way, else it would feel a wee bit like cheating. Right. Almost got the first parts of our gear together. I will need 
an axe and a pickaxe to start with. I've got my sword. So we can make a good progress once we exit the tavern. Which I do look forward to. Getting myself gone from here. So that will make our axe. Like so. And with the axe made, it'll be easier to collect that back up. And then we'll get our pickaxe. Soon enough. Jolly good. And I will take this with me and leave that there as a decoration. Alright. I need one more wood. Alas. I shall not be destroying my property or the property of the tavern. I guess it doesn't belong to me. As much as I'd like it to. Oops. Well, there goes that lovely tree. Uh, that is a right shame. Oh! The chest hides up top. Well then, we learned something from it. And if we ruined the local decor. Hmm. I don't think that sword's designed to take out cobwebs. Uh, hello. We got ourselves a little bit of starting gear. We have to be careful with axes and trees, especially in something like this. Like that there. <laughs> huh. I think someone forgot to install the windows that they might have been planning. Yeah, well, the tavern in the tavern town will certainly flesh themselves out eventually, even if I don't live there myself. We want a helmet of fire protection, I think, to start with. And with this wood, we can now make the stick of destiny to make the pick. And please don't destroy the tavern. Thank you. Okay. Axe is too dangerous to be inside a building made of wood, I think. And it's getting on to night. But I do not have enough gold. Hmm. I was about to say I do not have enough gold to stay the night, but it appears that I do. So I shall pay the tavern, and I shall sleep the night here instead of going off to die. Handy that. All right, off we go then. Starved, but hopeful and ready to what adventures may lie. And right nearby, I happen to know there's a slime island which means slime shoes, but food and the acquiring of is more important to start with. So, we shall fish for salmon for our very start. Do I have less breath underwater than normal? No, it's just a little percentage thing instead of a ticker tacker bottle whacker. Sounds like skeletons down there. Maybe in the woods. Right, final salmon. Get eaten. And of course, I left myself without the furnace, as I was being fancy or fanciful, so I'll need to mine some more. Hello! I don't know what the music's about. I think it's coming from underground. But what's more interesting, the hello, is dragon bones! Very nice start. Now, is this the burning nations of a dragon? No, it's just weird stone. What are you exactly? Scoria. Never heard of it. But I have enough stone now to make a furnace so I can cook the fish. So, the fish shall be delish. There we have it. Food will be cooked, and we'll have a good start. Lightning's right in the skull. Not bad. Not bad at all. Didn't gain any scales out of the skeleton, however. I don't think the skeleton scales are a thing anyways. And that will bring me up. A good amount of food. Bloody excellent. And if you wish to play this mod along with the world as is, the whole thing will be saved and uh, put into, uh, whatchamacallit? Ah yes, we'll be linked in the description. That's what I think, yeah, we'll be linked in the description for you. And here we happen to have as well, 
the coordinations of the general area, which I've set the spawn to 000, so that should carry over in the game saved under the Gongvig. That should be exported to you if you download it from the page that's going to be in, which is a Google Doc. That's it, yes. Ah, my brain does work. How dangerous do you reckon an emu is? I don't think I risk it. But I think I do increase my constitution by two points. Wow, I've got a lot of XP. And I increase my strength to up my health regen, which apparently strength's linked to. Not quite D&D stats. Or Minecraft stats. Well, maybe it's Minecraft stats. I mean, that's exactly what it is, but still. Not exactly what you might expect, but constitution and strength seem like good places to start with. And we got a field full of kangaroos. And let's increase that render distance. Ooh, another dragon skeleton. Brilliant. It appears that the sword, if I happen to hold its duration, just goes down over time. Okay, so we don't hold the sword. But we do go to the second dragon skeleton, which is a brilliant find. And we already found ourselves castle on the hillside. There's a lot of monsters underground. And a potential village. Oh, brilliant. Another lightning dragon. This appears to be some sort of mesa. Ah, oh, Goblin King. Okay. I think he lives on the mountainside. But, over here, we have... Ah, yes. Bread. Brilliant. Nothing in those storage containers, but this will be an excellent source of food to start with. Air cells established here quite nicely. Looks like a tempted but failed port of that. And an ear. Well, we'll just be taking those with us. And I believe these types of building, if I'm correct with the mod, is not what I'm looking for. But a chest is always a good thing to take as well. Now, I. I'm not a fan of these kinds of biomes. I'm a fan of looting and robbing graveyards, though. And there's a very nice mountain over there. So I'll have to explore around a little bit for the things I want, but that is a very nice find. Okay. Uh, you know, the 1.16 version of the Graveyards mod, I think, make the game actually really easy, as they don't have proper guardians at all. So we can get some fairly good starting stuff by looting graveyards mods. Fairly good starting stuff. Get some extra iron, pants of mending, steel XP. I do not like stealing my XP. Thank you very much. Thunder strike. Well, now it's just have to go ahead and take that. Out. Bones. Bones are bones. It can be used for fertilizer. Nothing under there. I think that's most of the graves looted for in this graveyard. And so if we don't feel too bad about ourselves doing that, we can move on then from the graveyard that has been looted. And, ooh, a little bridge. Isn't that fancy? Look at that. Oh, and giant bones in a very small desert. And an abandoned building of some descriptor kind. I want to cross the bridge. No trolls beneath this bridge. No, the trolls live in ice caves beneath the ground. Well, this here is a little abandoned hut. The treasure chest in it. Oh my! You know, usually I wouldn't recommend eating random cake you find lying about in the wilderness. Well, this here looks like a mighty fine cake to eat. And poison potatoes can be hard to get your hands a hold of, so we'll take that with us as well on our journey. Cake and poison potato, and some undescript shrine of some sort. I didn't even get the slime shoes. What is wrong with me? This, I think, appears to be a dungeon. Yes. And speaking of dungeons, there's another chest, and I need string if I'm to make the slime shot. If I'm to get that, I need a sword. All these variety kinds of copper clutter in my inventory, though, can go away. 
as a real sword, opposed to an illusionary sword. Shall be made to gather string for the slime shop. And we shall also go into that chest that was up here. Yes. Uh, suspicious stew. Well, that seems suspicious to me, so I think I'll leave that one alone. Well, there we go. We get that. We take back the chest. We apparently waste most of a day. And I need to get back to that slime island over there. And not jump in the lava so I can get slime shoes and a slime shot. I've got an excellent amount of birch logs to get up there with. So, we'll have to go do that. Well then, that should free up exploring and make traversing the world much safer for us. Because fall damage is deadly and I'm not used to dealing with it because I deal with slime shots so often. Can't be over a hundred blocks tall, can it? That does look really high up there. Alright, leverage, judge the angle. You got a few extra blocks in case you don't make it. Yeah, 125 is an excellent amount of blocks and should definitely be enough to get us up there to begin with. And then with the slingshot and slime boots, I guess the slime shot and slime boots under our belt, we will definitely be able to go off into the world to get to the rest of the treasure. Unless... Slime... They are not as easily craftable at 1.16, which I fear might be the case. Slime. They look like additions. Shoes. Slime. Hmm. Uh-oh. Houston, it appears we may have a problem. Your recipe is still quite straightforward, but the slime boot... Oh, bollocks. Well then. Appears we have a small problem, as that is not as straightforward thing as I thought it was. Okay. Well then. Easy solutions abound seem to be evaded to us. What a shame. And now we have that hideous thing up there, undealt with. And I'll have to waste another gold to spend another night in that tavern. But then, we shall go out and find the home to live in. Oh yes, then we shall do so. Some of my adventuring plans though have been ruined. All right, Keeper, there you go. Are you demand a carrot as well? Fine. My goodness, greedy bugger, aren't they? But no more hiding in the tavern, and also where else of gold to pay them with. Our two spare knights in this place are taken from us. We must now go out, out into the world, to find a place to make a home to adventure from. Oh my, and we're immediately set upon by monsters. Well. I guess we fight them. You friendly? Nope. What on earth were you? Hit me and ran away. Well, I do not like you. No, I do not. Some sort of orc or goblin. I am out of here. Hey, am I? Well, Pierre is also too nice as long as it took to make whole bunches of monsters spawn. And we have encountered a giant mountain range. Hoping for a nice oak forest, you know, to live in. Instead, I'm encountered with the impassable Misty Mountains cold. What the? Huh? Uh. Okay? Am I about to be attacked by a dragon? What is doing this? Alright, well I managed to solve it for the moment by turning off something that's making noises. 
Um, and <laughs> I have no idea what caused that. Have to fix that up. Okay. Well, I guess this is now rather high Hrothgard than the Misty Mountains I made my way to the top of. With a very lonely grave and some sort of fortress. Who am I? Sleep pants and hats I've been finding. I mean, there's consistency to it at the least. Ooh, and a cloud with treasure on it. Well, I, I have to go get that. I, if I don't go and get that, then I'll be a cloudless treasure goober. So off we go. Let's get the cloud treasure. Leaving all these hideous nerd poles everywhere. Hmm. Well, just because it has a guardian doesn't mean we have to fight it. Ah! Got a pocket pet. Amazing. We're on our way to complete the, the uh, ranger challenge. And emerald and lap. I'm going to leave those as I don't know what they're good for, but the ice can be a little more tricky to get. So that's nice to have now. But we got ourselves a slippery wet pocket pet. Which makes swimming swimming and traversing water way easier. Ah I was one health away from dying there. Okay. Eating a golden carrot then. And gain that big regenerative boost. Didn't die though. Oh my, that is a very nice looking flat land over there full of flowers. No trees though. Oh no, they're the trees. Well, I, right next to this mountain here, I always like mountains. Big mountains are always my favorite. And it looks remarkably flat down there. It looks remarkably pleasant. A river, everything going on. If we can find more forest, that'd be great. But honestly, I've lived in a lot of forests and I've lived on a lot of mountains. But next to a mountain, and just a nice flat plain, I think would be an excellent place for adventurer to live and to set up their home, their keep, their space of which they dwell. Good mountains to mine, rivers to do fishing or whatnot in, treasures to be explored in the caves about, yes. And lots of botania flowers. Good spot for adventure. Also, whatever that building is, but very easy to do the astral sorcery up there. We just need to find the temple to begin with. And we can get that all popping when we get it dropping. And monsters underground? Okay, we can definitely populate with more trees. We got our own little bridge. That is lovely. In fact, it looks like we might happen to have a spot to help us get set up with. If that is a roguelike dungeon, which I think it is, that is also brilliant. And some flowers, this is an excellent spot. And raccoons! Excellent! Bunch of raccoon friends, a roguelike dungeon, we need a dungeon nearby. Do dungeoneering. We've got two little huts. This appears to be the good place. There's treasure upstairs, this leads to a dungeon dimension, maybe? Actually, I'm not certain what in lies in this house. Well, it's not bad. So we got this house here. For a nice little bed. Now we have a spawn. And we can set up a proper keep. We got the dungeon. Let's go check out that house there. We'll need to repair this bridge. Seen worse days, but there's fish in the river. And everyone likes fish in the river. All right. Golden trees nearby. Little abandoned hut. We can fix this thing up. Got a little bit of treasure in it. Yeah, well, there's a fixer upper, that's for certain. Okay, a book, some rotten flesh, not bad. Can make this into a lovely little barn. Speaking of food, and we don't need to waste all our golden carrots. So we got bread. Bread upon bread upon bread. 
And we got a fall force, which looked absolutely gorgeous and a great way to get wood. So fall force nearby. Some lovely huts to work with. We've got a good starring hut. We can cut down trees. I say this is excellent. Excellent place to live. I'm very pleased to go over that mountain. Very, very pleased. Alright. Seems we're well and truly sorted to start out with. Got ourselves a temporary home until we build our own. Got the venturing, got the dungeons, and... Don't know why I'm so obsessed with the bridges. As I am a squid boy now. Squid, 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 squid. Look at me go. Maybe. Wait a minute. Why aren't you activating? Water breathing. Do I have to put you somewhere in my inventory? Do you go in a bobble? Slot. Or do you have to be in my hotbar? Ah, you have to be in the hotbar. Oh, wow. Okay. That was a little excessive. My goodness. Okay, so the pet pals do have to be in the hot bar. But when you have them, fiercely powerful. Very good to know. Very, very good to know. Okay. That is grand. They're actually quite balanced then. Very grand. Green silo home. Okay. Well then. That is where we will end off today. We've established a place to live. We've looted a whole bunch of places already, like any good adventurer does. We encountered Skyrim music. I think we are figuring out what we're getting ourselves into. And we got cows. All in all, a very good day. So, thank you very much for watching. And until next time. I shall catch you all then in Minecraft, Dragons, and Dungeons. <laughs>